Babe Ruth. Few athletes in the history of American sport have dominated a game as Babe Ruth did baseball. Indeed, few figures have had a more profound and lasting impact on America as a nation. To this day, Ruth is still the most legendary and renowned figure baseball has ever known. On a baseball field for almost 20 years, he was the center of attention no matter what he was doing. From the time he first stepped out of the dugout for batting practice, hours before a game was to begin, until the last out in the ninth inning, the crowd was mesmerized by his presence. But Babe Ruth is much more than just a baseball legend. He is, in fact, a major figure in the social history of 20th century America. An American treasure, legacy, and hero passed on from one generation to the next and a part of our national heritage and folklore. George Herman Ruth was born in Baltimore, Maryland on February 6, 1895. His family was poor and young George was raised on the rugged and seedy Baltimore waterfront. As a child, George ran wild on the streets, often getting into trouble with the authorities. His mother was a sickly woman who could not properly take care of the youngster. His father, a bartender by trade, had no time to see to the boy's upbringing. As such, when George was seven, Mr. and Mrs. Ruth decided to put George in St. Mary's Industrial Home for Boys on the outskirts of Baltimore. St. Mary's was, in effect, a reform school for wayward and troubled boys. It was run in a very strict manner by an order of Franciscan brothers. The boys learned trades and worked from sunup till sundown. The major recreation at the school was baseball, and it was in these games at St. Mary's that Ruth's enormous talent first surfaced. Under the guidance of Brother Matthias, the head Franciscan at St. Mary's, Ruth became the dominant player at the institution in all facets of the game. As a left-handed pitcher, catcher, and batter, it wasn't long before George's athletic abilities on a ball field attracted the attention of Mr. Jack Dunn. Dunn was the owner and manager of the Baltimore Orioles of the International League. Shortly after Ruth's 16th birthday in 1911, Dunn signed the youngster as a pitcher. For two years, Ruth performed brilliantly for the Orioles. He was a dominant pitcher in the International League and occasionally, at bat, exhibited the awesome power that would later make him an American legend. Because he was so young, Ruth's Oriole teammates started calling him Babe and the name stuck. Naturally, Ruth's abilities attracted the attention of major league scouts. In 1914, when Ruth was 18, Jack Dunn sold his contract to the Boston Red Sox of the American League. It was a major turning point in the annals of American sport. During the tumultuous decades of the Roaring Twenties and the despair of the Depression in the 1930s, Baseball was one of the brightest lights in the lives of many Americans. One of baseball's brightest lights during the period between the world wars was Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig's life shines as a realization that someone of meager beginnings could achieve the American dream that drew over 15 million immigrants to America from 1891 to 1910. Among them were two German immigrants, Heinrich and Christina Gehrig, who married in 1900 at the dawn of the new century with the hope of a better life for themselves and the family they would raise. Like many immigrants, they settled in a New York neighborhood made up of people sharing the same heritage. Manhattan's Yorkville was a heavily German urban neighborhood where the Gehrigs lived and where they planned to raise a family. Tragically, three of the four children Mrs. Gehrig would give birth to in the coming years would die in infancy. The only child to survive was a son, Lewis Henry Gehrig, born June 19, 1903, weighing a healthy 14 pounds. Mrs. Gehrig was extremely overprotective of her son because, she explained, he is the only big egg I have in one basket. In the first two decades of his life, young Lou Gehrig would be molded into a great baseball legend by everything his loving mother would do right and everything his hapless father did wrong. The Gehrigs were of meager means because Heinrich Gehrig was often unable to work due to illness or was unwilling to work due to his own laziness. He often called in sick even when he found work. Heinrich's irresponsible behavior caused much hardship for his wife and son, but forced both to be much more self-reliant. 
Mrs. Gehrig, years later, would often insist that her son was not a product of the slums just because the family had little money. Clearly, she was very hard working and she raised her